I'm going from start to finish in a simple organic mix recipe which can be utilized to grow an array of different plants from fruits and vegetables or in my case growing some fat sticky icky flowers. I'm Matt Taylor and this is Mr. Canucks Grow. I am going to be showcasing not one but two start to finish runs. One tent is proudly made in the US of A. It's being powered by the Growcraft X6 from Chiltech. This unit is 600 watts of power draw from the wall with a very impressive full system efficacy range of 3.13 to 2.81 micromoles per joule. This light is passively cool, so there are no moving parts on this LED, and this has a slick rick linear bar design. And as stated on their website, it is made with the finest American materials and workmanship. This light is pretty friggin' big. It fits very snugly inside a heavy duty, <laughs> duty, five feet by five feet gorilla grow tent. Also, the ventilation is handled all by AC Infinity. The second tent is powered by Spider Farmer, notoriously known as a Chinese brand. This run is featuring the SC7000, which pumps out over 700 watts and easily covers a 5x5. However, this LED is sitting in a wall scraping 4x4 grow tent. My plan is to cover all the main chores and tasks I did for both these grow tents and I'm going to try to not make the video too damn long. Although y'all say you can't have them long enough. Hopefully this video is made well enough it brings you value, rather it's helping with the basics to gardening or just pure entertainment consumption. Either way my goal is to earn your spare time. So if there is value here, a big help is to simply like, comment, subscribe and I want to remind everyone that every piece of equipment in this video is going to be linked down below with a coupon code for anyone that is interested. I do want to thank the sponsor of this video. If you've been following me for a little bit, then you already know Gaia Green Organics has been my staple growing ingredients. Listen, I'd argue it's the easiest entry to growing high quality flowers. This, this is the opposite to it being complicated. If you want to grow easily some of the tastiest flavonoid bursting flowers, flavonoid, is flavonoid a word? Flavonoid. I think it is. For more information on all the growing products used and store locators to get yours will be linked down below in the description. Both of these runs will be directly from seed and I'm going to be using the easiest germination process known to mankind. But before I prep my soil and germinate anything, I am going to be resetting both my 4x2 and 5x5 grow tents. The carbon filters in both the tents are still good and active and as much as I would love to just leave them up there for another run, I'm going to take the carbon filters off the inline fans and at the bare minimum wash and clean the filter cloth for the next run. And the entire tents need to be sanitized and wiped down. Cleaning is a part of gardening, not, not the best marketing tool to inspire, but the facts of life. The grow light of choice to veg these babies is the Spider Farmer SF2000 and despite its smaller compact size, it will easily cover this 4x2 grow tent. Its power draw from the wall is 200 watts at 2.7 micromoles per joule. 
This is an older version, I've had it for 2 years now, but it has plenty of lifespan in these diodes. It's the perfect light for this smaller size grow tent. It provides efficient light bar for vegging and flowering plants at an efficient cost per day to run. It's a lot of bang for your buck, as they would say. Can't make a promise, but I do my best. 25 sitting on 25 racks. Just got something that we ain't done yet. But in the crib, that's a goddamn flex. Goddamn flex. Sign that check. Told him last year that I'm paying up next. Can't take calls, but it's sign that text. From way downtown, but it's just still wet. Yeah, that's a guarantee. Can't get a city, man, ain't no one that's me. Ain't dead, man, still doing it with ease. Cause it ain't that hard when I'm talking about me. The growing style and recipes I use are very simple. In fact, it is often the pure basics to gardening, so if you have any past experience working in a garden, then some of the things demonstrated today will be familiar. Today's nutrient recipes that I will be using from start to finish are universal, will work with any soil-like substrate. I am using organic living soil from Gaia Green specifically, but Coco Core or ProMix or any other brand of soil like substrate will also be fine substitute. The only caveat is Gaia Green suggests using only 10% of worm castings if you are not using their specific brand of organic living soil. As you may know, I love my worm castings. It's a staple in every single grow and utilized at every stage of a plant's life. And because of that, I mix my castings in at a higher percentage. To Typically, I'm around 20% of castings to soil being used and often you see that I purely just eye the heck out of it. This is organic slow release gardening, let's be honest, we eye out a lot of things, it's intuitive guesstimations. When it comes to starting seeds, I'm old school, I am seed right to soil kind of guy and the germination rates I usually get is pretty much 100% for the most part. The food the seeds will use to germinate into seedlings and then into small veg plants will all be mixed into this living soil. This recipe is pretty easy. My soil base is living soil. Organic worm castings mixed in and for slow release amendments, I am just using the 444 all purpose from Guy Green. This is being mixed in at three tablespoons per one gallon of medium that I am using. And recently, I've been sent a new product from GrowTech. I've been a big fan of their Synergy Mycorrhizae for application to the roots during transplants. And this here is a product called Black Pearl. It's high quality charcoal and it's used to improve the soil's quality. It's mineralized with organic inputs like volcanic and sedimentary rock dust, humic acid, and kelp extracts. Ultimately, this pup is gonna help stimulate the soil biology and provide a nice boost to my gardens. These products from GrowTech seem to marry well with Gaia Green organic inputs. This soil is already pre-mixed from a recent transplant. It has castings and 444 all-purpose mixed in already. And I figured I'd just eye it out and give her the old guesstimation move and lightly sprinkle some black pearl charcoal on the topsoil and then filling up a solo cup one by one. My solo cups are full. I am now going to plant the seeds right into the soil, no more than a fingernails deep and simply cover and water. I argue I'm using between one and two shot glasses of unpHed dechlorinated water in these solo cups, which I got from Amazon, link down below, come with their own domes, which is great because these babies need that high humidity atmosphere to get off to a fresh start. I am planting a few phenos of a few different strains, all of which are feminized photoperiod seeds. And yes, I am watering them in slowly with a turkey basin. all the solo cups in one singular tray and I decided I didn't want them directly on the ground. One, because it's colder down there and two, I don't want to bend all the way down there. So five gallon bucket has a stand. The domes on these solo cups work perfectly and are utilized for the first two-ish days of the germination process. Once seeds sprout, I remove the domes and continue to water. The 
SF2000 is set to 200 watts of power draw and I'm using a light distance between 27 and 29 inches. Once the germination starts, the seedlings should be off to the races with efficient light intensities and slow release food to last them a handful of weeks. Well, there's no problem. If you had a gun, shoot them in the head. The domes worked as intended, raising the temperature and humidity, creating an optimal environment for a seed to go through its germination process. After three days, I removed the domes because every single seed sprouted. Yet another 100% success rate for germination and a total of three days from seed to sprout in a cello cup. Mind you, with food that will last them three weeks, maybe even a little longer. For now, the day-to-day -day focus is watering them when they feel light to the touch until they are ready for their first transplant. seedlings are growing into tiny trees. It's now day 16 and some still have their seed casing hanging on. Today I am checking in on the young seedlings just to see if they are dry and need some water. These little plants will need constant airflow to keep their stems toy and strong. As you can see, my 5x5 is not currently in use. I am using the AC Infinity Cloud Ray 6 clip fan from that tent as airflow for the seedlings inside the 4x2, which means I haven't uh, been closing the tent doors. It's not really needed. The temps are dialed in at 78 Fahrenheit with an average of 55% humidity. The germination stage is on average one to seven days and the seedling stage is on average two to three weeks from when I planted the seeds. The seedling stage is a fragile process. These seedlings have a small root system and if I'm not careful, I can drown them by overwatering. Watering more often has proven to work more effectively than oversaturating the root system and waiting numerous days to water again. This is called the dryback, the overnight drying process of the soil. How much water content was reduced overnight because this can influence the entire balance of the plant. On average, I aim for watering every day or every other day. If the plants take three days or longer to dry out, I reduce the amount of water given. And if they are drinking fast, I can increase the water slightly. As the days pass and the seedlings grow in size, new leaves are produced and old ones become more developed. I treat the plants and seedlings until they develop leaves with a full set of fingers. Meaning sometimes the true veg stage doesn't even start until two Heck, sometimes three entire weeks from when the seed was buried into the soil. This is also the stage where growers will begin topping and training plants. This is when I tie down my autoflowers while my young photo period plants are being topped to create two main colas instead of just the one. It's day 25. These seedlings have graduated into big and hungry vegging plants. The roots have outgrown the small seedling pots and have depleted all the slow release food. I need to prepare more living soil for a transplant and relocate these hungry girls into larger pots. I'm back downstairs to prepare my living soil recipe for the upcoming veg stage. This will look a lot like how the soil is prepared for the germination and seedling stage because it's the same. 
starting with living soil. Mix in my organic worm castings at 20%. Don't forget, use 10% unless exclusively using Gaia Green's living soil. I sprinkle in 444 all purpose, add it in at three tablespoons per one gallon of medium being used. And this is before the GrowTech products were sent, so I was just using up some extreme gardening mycos. Essentially, it's just mycorrhizae. Normally, I just add this to the roots, but I'm trying to not waste it and get rid of it, so I am adding it in and mixing my soil. The main ingredients to this soil recipe for veg is organic worm castings and the 444 all-purpose. Anything else you want to add in is just fantastic. Often, I will mix an entire bag of soil at once because it's easier to know the exact gallon amount of soil being used, thus the math gets easier to figure out. If I do find the plants are rooted up, I will prune them with snippers. I just add two or three cuts into the root system to help stimulate outward growth once they hit that fresh soil inside their new homes. With the extra square footage now for the roots to expand into, the stems will thicken up. The plant's growth rate increases. More leaves, nodes, and branches are produced. And while all this is happening, the water and food demands go up. This is to aid in the plant's development. The upgrade today are cheap one and a half gallon plastic pots. Nothing fancy is needed to be a good gardener that can grow healthy, robust plants. I find very similar growth and health in all kinds of pots, and I find for veg, plastic pots function a little better over fabric, my opinion. The pots contain the power of super soil. The recipe I just mixed will provide the plants with food for the next two and a half to three weeks before the plant's root system becomes overgrown and the soil becomes depleted. They are transplanted. I am going to place them inside my 5x5 Gorilla Grow Tent and will be giving them some water pH to somewhere in the vicinity of 6.5. Anywhere between 6.2-ish to 6.9 or 7 pH is groovy by me. I find this works well with this slow release super soil. Today's pH is around 6.7 to 6.8. The Growcraft X6 from Chill LED is a big unit. I could lower it closer to the plants, but instead I'm going to increase the light draw to 50% of power, a total of 300 watts from the wall. Despite the distance between the light fixture and the plants, this is plenty of light power for them. As the plants grow and the roots spread outward into the soil, I will notice faster intake of water. That's when I will increase the light power again to keep the constant drive of fast growth. It's day 34. I'm checking in to see just how light each plant is. I am finding the plant's root system is now just acclimating to its new home. The growth rate is going to explode over the next two weeks of veg. Yeah, I'm in your town, I'm coming your way, just wait up. Me and my team ain't taking no L's, I told them you don't want to play us. We going out town with a flight in the morning, so fuck it, I'm just gonna stay up. Remember last year, I told them the price, and now they all want to pay up. They hear me now, they coming too late. All the replies to save up. Me and my guys, we did it ourselves, so no one can say they made us. They give me shit, they trying to go. In the next week, they will want an increase in water. For now, I've been avoiding overwatering, and I'm keeping a tight ship on maintenance duties at least once a day. I'm in here just for a few minutes to monitor everything from the environment to the plant conditions. The structure I've created on these plants is a good building block to work from. This will be a five plant run inside a five by five, so the training and the building out won't be as dramatic as if it was just a one plant run. So far, the only training on these batch of girls has been topping. Each plant now has two main top sites. I love when the good news coming in on a day to day. Already know what's happening now. It's been 42 days since planting the seeds, and well, today is a sight for sore eyes. The plants are showing signs of immaculate health, which means it's a great day for some more training. I am going to be low stress training the main cola sites on each plant. I am twisting and bending over the top branches. This will increase the width of the plant, bud sites for flowers, and it will maintain a more even canopy. 
And the healthier the plants are, the more malleable the stems become, allowing the bending of the branch to happen much easier. I need to be patient and gentle during this process. Snapping off the main branch that will hold some of the main colas is a big whoopsie daisy, but the technique is effective. The five girls in this tent are looking great. They are going to be bouncing back overnight. Next up in this grow will be the final transplant before entering in a flower. Speaking of which, let's check in on the 4x4 spider farmer tent, where I would argue is more of an experimental grow. It's around day 55 of when the seeds were planted for germination. I have three strains in total here and a few phenos of each, essentially trying to figure out exactly what these genetics are all about. The Diamond Hands and the Alien Treats Phenos have been hassle free. They seem to love life and haven't had any signs of showing stress. The Great Nuts, on the other hand, seem to be a small runny batch that seems grumpy on the daily. Now this does contain a cross of the banana butter cups and it seems these Phenos weigh heavy on that side. It's kind of a finicky strain from start to finish but potentially could have some of the frostiest flowers of all the strains that I'm growing in this video. I am trying to get this garden to the flower stage ASAP Rocky. And I'm doing that with more plants and less training. Although some training has been performed. I've topped the plants one single time and today I'm doing some maintenance. I am cleaning the plants up with some minor defoliation. And I'm using some low stress training techniques on some of the plants. The Spider Farmer SF7000 has been set to 80% of power, which pulls around 560 watts from the wall, if my math is correct. The light sketch is still currently set to the veg stage, 18 hours on and 6 hours off. But these plants have been transplanted already into their final pots, and the goal is to send them into flower shortly. I'm mainly using 3 gallon pots, some plastic, some fabric. Since this video is now over 20 minutes, I'm cutting this episode right here. But subscribe and tune in to the next episode which will cover all the important details performed from here on out including a detailed recipe on my flower super soil Re oh I fucked that up. Please like, comment, subscribe, frick. I love when the good news coming in on a day to day. Already know what's happening. I don't gotta shake the hay. Big moves, big step in the right direction. The trip continues every double use a second Yeah, I see the light.